Good morning. So today, home brew copper anti-foul going on. A lot of prep to do. Um, I sand it down. I've got 45 minutes to do that before my helper arrives. We'll do it best, but it's going to take it's going to take a couple of hours to repair this probably. So it's epoxy primer, so it's got to be properly keyed, otherwise it won't stick. All right, on and up. So haven't gone to great lengths last night to get uh, a line on the boat. I, I'm not totally convinced it's right. It should be, but I'm not sure if the boat's sitting straight. I've stuck a plumb line on and, and it, cer it certainly looks like it is straight. I don't know, it, it, the boat just looks like it's leaning to me. Uh, well, it's not. That suggests it's not leaning. But it looks like it's leaning to the right to me. So, what would what would be an absolute disaster is if I put the copa coat on and that line's too low. So I think what I need to do is to take that off. Sand whole thing the whole bottom and then put the homebrew copper anti-foul on put her in the water and then we'll worry about a boot line later on so executive decision I've taken off all the tape the lines that I spent hours putting on last night but it's the right thing to do um, I wasn't fully convinced and there'd be nothing worse than getting the boat in the water and then realising that I'd put the lines in the wrong place. So let's just put on the top boat up to the existing lines and it will be a really big band of copper coat above the water, but that's how it's going to be for now. Let the sanding commence. All right. Good afternoon, welcome to uh, Copper Workshop. <coughs> this is James. Say hello, James. Hello there. So James is, uh, he actually is a brain surgeon as a job, <laughs> so. So he's been helpful with this. He's helped me sand down and we've just worked out the uh, ratio. So what did we say? 800 to one, have you got that? In weight. Yeah. So that's 800 of that to one kilo of resin. Yeah, copper resin, that's what we're going for. So that should equal to one kilo of copper per litre. We know we know that doesn't really matter that much, but we're, we again, don't really know what we're doing here. So we're, this is the stuff we're using. It's bioresin, CR82, got East Coast fiberglass. And um, yeah, they also sell this uh, lovely uh, copper powder as well. So that's that. So we're gonna now mix this in. Bit by bit, so I'll, I'll help there if you want to pour off. Uh, there we go. This is uh, oh, that's nice. That is nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's holding it up well, it's not dropping out. It's, it's very fine. The, I mean, this is like powder. I mean, if you blow it, it, go, it goes away like dust, basically. So it's, hopefully it's the right kind of thing for what we're trying to achieve. So, once more in. So this is our homebrew copper anti-foul. Should I bung it all in then? We yeah. use the drill, yeah? As long as it, none of it sticks on the bottom, I think that's the... So that's a kilo to a litre, basically. Um, well, what did we say? Is there 800 here in here altogether? It's 1,200 in litres. Okay. And then we put in 800. We put in a kilo of uh, copper. Yeah, a kilo of copper, yeah. Into a kilo of this, basically. So it's one to yeah. one. Yeah, it is Fine. one. Fine. Really I think you can get overly complicated with this stuff. <laughs> I think it, the, what we've got to do is put it on nice and thin, nice and carefully, and uh, 
and evenly. Uh, I think that seems to be the thing, and then let it get tacky before we do each coat. So um, we'll, I'll do a bit of real time and then just time lapse it because it's, it's, this is it's going to be like watching co copper dry. Yeah. Yes, I think this is mixed fine. I think we should just okay. So this is uh, the second coat of our homemade copper anti -foul. Uh The keel hasn't had a second coat yet, but it's pretty consistent. The first coat was really patchy, like the keel, you can see. Uh, but it, this second coat is much better. Uh, we changed our technique. We were using uh, big rollers like this. Give you an idea, that's my hand. So they're, they're massive rollers and they they were incredibly hard work and we were mixing up too much stuff and by the time we got to the end of what was it one kilo of resin it was going off before we had a chance to get it on the boat which was making it very hard work and also it was going on too thick but we're now ma we're mixing it up in batches of basically a quarter of a kilo so 250 grams of resin and then the hardener and all that stuff and that seems to well it is it's making a huge difference and we downsized to this this size roller um, and we're changing the roller for this next coat but this is not a job to be taken lightly it's taken so, four hours so far there's two of us if you had four people and one dedicated to mixing that would be the way to go um, and but still doing small batches but if there were four people you could max, mix probably half a litre at a time or maybe a litre but th this is really hard work she is signed to look very very good I'm very happy with that so we think we've got enough material for one more coat that's all I was hoping to get another two coats on but I just don't think we're going to have enough so we do what we can Hi everyone, <coughs> burning the midnight oil again. Uh, James had to go. Uh, he's got a really busy uh, day tomorrow. I've got one more coat to do. We've done some of it. Um, but yeah, one more coat to do with this uh, coat. It's not ideal conditions really, um, since it's getting late. But nevertheless, once it's on there, I mean, it's, it's gonna stay about 10 degrees tonight. So that should be all right. Um, but tomorrow it's gonna warm up that will go off it'll be fine so yeah uh, yeah this is where we're at with the boat um, yeah I just wanted to say thanks uh, if you watch these videos it's really nice that somebody's uh, interested in what I'm up to I'll be out there on the water soon yeah it's beckoning it's saying Desmond come and float on me don't worry I will mm. So, uh, update, uh, I've got uh, one side done. So just the port side to go, left side, uh, and that's me done. And I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight because this, uh, this is hard work. <laughs> Starting to get a little delirious from lack of uh, stopping of working. So that's how she looks now. I've just checked the time and it's kind of uh, it's just gone midnight and I just thought I'd show you the last bit so this is the fourth coat this is a hard hard job this is the fourth coat of the DIY copper coating copper coating what I would say 
is that this is this is a ball busting job and you need a lot of energy you need a good day and in this case a good night so I knew the weather was good so if it dragged on we're going to be alright and there's no rain forecast for the next few days so so that's, uh, that's good you do need really I would say so there were two of us doing this earlier and yeah we've worked hard um, with my sort of home brew, we couldn't have put it on much faster anyway with the given temperature because it's not really going off. So I don't know if uh, I've used the right resin or what, but you know, it is a kind of an experiment, this. Um, I'm pretty confident. I mean, we've got a fair amount of material on the boat, so... It's copper suspended in resin. If we give that a little sand back. I can't see why that won't work. Yeah, the other thing I would say is, obviously I'm wearing these little gloves. Make sure you wear, so at least sort of double bag them. So you're wearing two pairs, because this stuff seems to leach through the neoprene gloves and you end up with green hands. So I have literally green fingers right now. <laughs> I don't know how long it'll take to come out, but I think, uh, I mean, that's, that is tacky and that's kind of what you're aiming for when you recoat, but um, I would say it's probably slightly too wet still, but um, I'm just working with the conditions that I have. So well, I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with this, so, well, you say that it's probably turned into some of these, like a folklore thing where, you know, a few people have had a problem with it. Yeah, so this, starts to get a bit tacky quite quickly you've got to keep it moving keep it on there and mix it in small batches really small so we started off doing a litre at a time and by the time we got to the end of that litre with big rollers it was almost impossible to put on and it, because it was starting to go off it was going on really thick too thick um, so recommendation is small rollers because it takes less energy to push them and this stuff we're using is really tacky so one coat when we mixed up whole litre two of us with two big rollers two big trays we were exhausted at the end of that it was ball busting whereas this I've been at this for hours and hours and hours and although I am tired, I am managing to keep going. That's what we're looking for. But I'm very much looking forward to finishing this and having a shower. When I get home, I'm going home tonight. I could stay here, but I really did, after doing this, I'd really like a nice shower. And the one, the showers here at the marina aren't great. And the studio is not capable of letting water out of her bottom at the moment because uh, it would ruin this and I don't want that to happen for obvious reasons All right. yeah. you can see it takes a lot of rolling and uh, obviously anyone that's worked on a boat knows how awkward it is to get under, under here because it's yeah, funny old height, and you end up headbutting it. So my hair is kind of red anyway, but it's certainly going to be copper coloured tomorrow. Anyway, ciao bella, good night. I thought I'd just keep you in the picture. I went down to the car. Um, I, I had a good clear up outside so that I could just go away for a few days, not worry about it. So I've took down the blue tent. I've organised everything. I've tidied up all the mess. Went to the car, wouldn't start. And I thought, well, what the chuff is going on here? So I think the, the 12 volt battery's flex, I'd left the doors open all day. And um, 
It's gubbed the battery, I think. So I've got the battery in here. I've brought it up to the boat because obviously the boat's got charger, so I've connected that. And yeah, it's, it's sticking in 34 amps at the moment. So that shouldn't take long because it's only a 50 amp battery. So it should get up to 12 volts pretty quick, but I thought you'd find that quite funny. <laughs> it's now 2.06 in the morning. Oh, this is it. I think it's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's probably a bit cold when I put the last coat on. So it's gone a bit funny, but it's covered, nicely covered. Uh, you can see here, like almost like the copper's like, or something's like leached out of it, but that'll be okay. I'll just leave it a few days to go hard. But yeah, it looks fine. Up the front here, it's just gone a bit weird. It's, it's, it's like, I don't know, has the copper come out or something? Something's happened there. It's all right. But I ain't, I ain't doing nothing today. I'm leaving it. So, thanks for your help, James.